Hey everybody, and welcome to a brand new series. Northern Lion plays a wizard's lizard. I know that sounds like it could be, you know, a clever euphemism for Gandalf the Grey's cock, but uh, it's not. Instead, it is a top-down, indie, roguelike-ish game, and it's gonna get a lot of comparisons to The Binding of Isaac. It's inevitable that this will happen, um, but really it feels a little bit more like either Isaac meets Rogue Legacy, because there is kind of permanent progression, uh, or almost like, you know, The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. It's got a, like a serious vibe to that in a lot of different uh, areas, um, combined with some, you know, roguelike elements. But in any case, we're going to get started. This came out on Steam uh, today and is also available, well, it's today for you, but uh, I'm playing it in the past here. We're going to play as Raga. It's the only character we actually have. Um, but yes, uh, it's also available on some other platforms, but there will be a link uh, below, maybe to the Humble Widget, because I know the developer gets more of it uh, from the Humble Widget. Just to explain what is happening here, it's going to be pretty easy for you to figure out how things are going if you've ever watched me play Isaac. Um, I'm pretty sure that the game runs in Unity, which is not that relevant for a lot of people, but it does mean that there's kind of like lighting effects like this that you can see. So it reminds me a little bit of like Delver's Drop or uh, Legend of Dungeon with the way the lighting works. But in any case, um, basically pretty Isaac-like when you start. I mean, it's a twin-stick shooter. I'm using uh, WASD to move around and the arrow keys to shoot. You can shoot diagonally by holding two buttons down. You can also, I want to avoid killing this townsperson, you can also use the X key, and uh, this will create a totem, which shoots out some uh, fireballs every now and then, and this um, is just something that is time-gated. So every 30 seconds, you can pop one of those down, and you can also, this is going to make me a little bit worse off for when we get started, use a soul blast which uh, again is gated by time but also you need to have a soul orb to do it but it's a magical attack that does a lot of damage so you always start with a little bit of money and as I understand it as you progress through the game you unlock more townspeople thereby allowing you to start with more money um, and that allows you to buy gear at the start and stuff like that and um, well you'll see as we move along here there's a lot of interesting stuff going on in this game you know um, Compared to Our Darker Purpose, I kind of like this uh, the, the gimmicks that are on here a little bit more. There's some things I don't necessarily love about the game, but uh, generally speaking, I think it's going to be a good fit for uh, at least a short series. So we picked up some extra money there. So, the way that this works is, again, imagine it a little bit Rogue Legacy-ish, you know? It's not like uh, Isaac, at least not from what I can tell in my, you know, little bit over an hour of play so far. Um... It's not like Isaac in that, um, you know, you beat the whole game on one run. There's actually a soul orb there that we got lucky to get. Um, instead, you kind of get uh, segmented into these different areas. I wonder if I can kill that skull. I think I had a chance to do that before. Sometimes they just kind of bounce around here. There are puzzles that you can solve by, by being a ghost yourself, which I'll explain. We got an item. These are the Ranger's Hand Wraps. I think this actually increases our rate of fire, but like a lot of, um, you know, roguelike games, part of the fun is figuring out what these items actually do for yourself. So, uh, yeah, basically, you know, the areas are kind of divided into, um, you know, subdivided, I should say, in, into other areas. So I've been to the cemetery so far. I've been to the sewers. Um, we'll have three levels of the cemetery, and then I will have a boss fight after that, and hopefully... I'll be able to at least get to that point. Maybe we can free some townspeople. I've never done that before. I wanted to start uh, the series before I act actually, like, improved our town at all, just to make, uh, you know, things a little bit more easy to follow. So again, you know, fairly standard kind of uh, roguelike stuff going on here. I'll, I'll probably do a Let's Look out of the game that's going to be out at roughly the same time. So if you want to hear, like, more, more critical thoughts or more editorial-type thoughts about this, um, we can farm some zombies here if we want to, by the way. If you walk over those dirt patches, we can just... Farm them and possibly get some gold. There's no experience mechanics, but, you know, 50 gold doesn't really make that big of a difference either, but I guess it does add up if you do it enough. Um, items are typically kind of expensive, so, again, 50 gold doesn't make a, dig a big difference, but, um, you know, three or 4,000 definitely can. Just to explain what's going on at the uh, top here. Oh, there's some extra gold for us. Um, 40 is our health, and you can see that it's 40 out of a, a number that's higher than 40, which I believe is uh, 50, but I did take some damage from one of these enemies. This enemy charges at me when I do my first attack. I should really use the, um, what was I going to say? I should really use the, uh, the totem more often, because it doesn't actually, like, require anything to use. There is one more level we didn't go to here, but if you look on our map, you can see that that's the exit to the floor. Um, the sword indicates our weapon. I think it's kind of weird that we're throwing swords, but that does happen in, you know, A Link to the Past, for example. Um, the, like, running indicator, I think is an indicator, oh, there's a, a shop here. I may be able to buy something. And actually, there's another room down here, so let's come to this room first and see if, um... I can farm up some delicious gold. This room strikes me as, like, maybe a little bit puzzly. Maybe if I kill all of the enemies, I'll get some kind of reward here. But again, I'm as much in the dark as you guys are. 
for stuff like this. I've, I've never actually, um, you know, made substantial progress, so hopefully we'll be able to do it together. Should point out again, um, if you want to play it for yourself and, and go on the journey with me, uh, 15 bucks at, uh, you know, the whatever store is in the video description below. Because I'm not sure if the Steam store page is actually up as of the time of this recording. So we picked up maybe like 450 gold there. We can buy either these this ring or these boots. Now the ring, uh, I don't know. The, the rings I've seen so far are kind of like, um, you know, speed boost or uh, multi-shot. So I'm going to actually go for the ring. I'm pretty sure that these armored boots actually just allow me to uh, have more HP. Which is valuable, but the ring might be more important. Alright, so we got the Ring of Multi-Strike, which is actually one of the items I've seen... Oh, nice. One of the items I've seen uh, most often, but it's really, really helpful because it allows you to shoot two swords at once, which helps out a great deal. From what I've seen so far, uh, the items that you get, you know, it's, it's not really like Isaac in the sense that you get a ton of, like, crazy items that totally change the way you play. It seems a lot more like, um, it, it's pretty skill dependent, but your attributes can be, you know, pushed one way or the other. We got very lucky to get some food there. Um, your attributes can kind of be pushed one way or the other based on the, the items that you pick up. So it seems a little bit more kind of vanilla based, almost a little bit Spelunky-ish. You know, you never, you know, you get a jetpack or something in Spelunky, um, that changes the way you play. But apart from that, you know, you just, you're, you're Mr. Spelunky, right? You never shoot a big laser beam out of your head that destroys everything on the floor. Uh, in any case, so multi-strike is really good. We also, um, it, it kind of in keeping with the uh, Rogue Legacy vibe, there are things called blueprints in the game. And basically, it, the more blueprints we get, the more items we can actually purchase in the town that we kind of start in. Um, so we don't always have to start with a sword. We could spend some of our money and start with, you know, a spear instead or something like that. So this puzzle... I don't really know how to beat, but we do just have to hit this switch. I think it involves being a ghost, and I've mentioned this a couple of times, this being a ghost thing that goes on in this game. Uh, and you might be a little bit confused about it, and you should be. I was kind of trying to keep it a surprise, but basically, in a wizard's lizard, uh, one, of the, one of the gimmicks that you have is that you actually get a second chance after you die. But it kind of turns the game... Oh my god, I'm doing so poorly here. Just wait a, up a second here. Um, you, yeah, you get a second chance after you die. Uh, but you turn into a ghost, and that's not ostensibly, you know, a bad thing. Just take out this enemy here. I really thought that maybe he would give me an apple or something. Um, but, you know, you start with the same amount of HP, at least on this character. You have to fight more enemies, as I understand it. But I also heard in a... That was so stupid, I'm, I can't believe I didn't take damage there. I also heard in a Steam review that there are some puzzles that are only solvable if you are a ghost. So that's kind of a cool mechanic that maybe um, we'll get to see more of a little bit later. I wouldn't expect to see it in this episode. I'm still very much a novice, but uh, we'll, we'll see if we can try it out. I'm doing really, really terribly right now, but that's okay. There's a treasure chest here. One thing I'm not such a huge fan of, at least so far, is that um, the way that equipment works is kind of like the way that equipment works in a standard RPG. So... Um, let's pick up this, that's very expensive, and we'll also open this. Oh, it's Mimic! Okay, that actually could have killed me pretty easily. Ah, uh, yeah, we're gonna probably become a ghost. Oh, no, we killed it. We got some, uh, HP back at least. Um, yeah, so what that means is, you know, we have the ring, the ring of multi-strike. Uh, that's great, but if we find another ring, we lose our ring of multi-strike. So we have to be very cautious about stuff like that. Uh, and it's especially weird because I don't really know what a lot of the items do. Obviously, this ring is a little bit of a different example because it's pretty easy to understand what it does, but, um, you know, for some of this stuff, I'm, I'm a little bit in the dark. Please don't be a mimic. We can actually buy some HP here. Don't be a mimic. Don't be a mimic. It is not a mimic. Those are b free boots. Bo Demon's hooves. If I had to guess, I imagine this maybe gives us a little bit more damage. You know, a little demonic damage seems to kind of work. Um, we're gonna buy... I think we're going to buy a Cupcake and Apple. So the Cupcake gives us 20 HP, the Apple gives us 5. I mean, that's a little bit expensive for what we got. By the way, if you die and you become a ghost, I believe that you can use this Pentagram Room to actually uh, bring you back to life. But I'm not 100% sure on that mechanic yet. Can you kill the shopkeepers? I'm sure that's going to be a very common question. Yes, indeed you can. Um, do you want to? No. The doors will close and uh, it'll be extremely difficult for you to survive if you do it. But if you succeed, then you do get items for free. There are also some, uh, you know, trap-like rooms. This isn't really like a, you know, 100% objective trap room or something like that. But there are fans here that are kind of pushing me around. That's what those wooden things are. Trying to push me around like a Matchbox 20 song. Can we actually destroy the fan? No, we cannot. Okay. Now, this owl is like the most annoying enemy. But we killed it because of our multi-strike ring. Not a mimic. Not a mimic. It's a book. 
Monster Manual. So I actually don't know what this does, um, but I assume that it has some kind of passive effect. Now, we can't buy this map. Uh, I actually have never bought this, so I don't know that it's a map. I'm just assuming. And a lot of people are going to be like, oh, eyes a grip off. It has a monster manual in it. Well, you know, keep in mind, oh, why did I... I think I got blown back through that door. Don't do it again. There we go. Um, you know, th th it wears its influences on its sleeve, and I don't think it's something to hold against the game, even though I do think that, you know, Isaac is a major inspiration here. Um, there, there is... Seriously, like, this is not just Sushi Castle, basically, is what I'm trying to get at. It's not even Our Darker Purpose, which had its own unique vibe as well. This, um, very much has, like, more, for me, a Legend of Zelda vibe than the Binding of Isaac. Like, a dungeon-crawling Legend of Zelda type thing. But anyway, um, let's head down to the next floor. Uh, and what I, what I meant to say is that some of the items in Binding of Isaac were also nods to items in Zelda. So, I don't, I'm, I'm just cautioning you... To be wary about being like, look, it totally, wow, that was a huge, uh, barrel there. Uh, I'm cautioning you about being like, oh, this game rips off, like, this item from the Binding of Isaac when, oh, I hate. Let's try this totem. I don't think it'll work too well, but, uh, maybe it will. Um, but yeah, when maybe it's actually, like, from the Binding of Isaac, yes, but via, you know, that game's love for, um, Legend of Zelda to begin with. Anyway. Long story short, hopefully you understand what I was getting at there. So those are basically like blue turrets from the Binding of Isaac. They, uh, they spawn into you, unfortunately. Uh, the angry owls are pretty annoying. I'm gonna see if I can just take out, uh, these Zambros first. Because I would rather not trigger the angry owl. Once you hit them, they start to get angry. And, you know, we are in Cemetery 3 now. Uh, enemies become substantially more difficult at this point. They start to get to the point where they're shooting at us. Um... Let's see if this is a mimic. It is not. Those are greaves or gloves. Gauntlets. Battle mage gauntlets. So I'm assuming that those probably increase the damage of our uh, magical attacks, which means I think I'm going to prefer to go with ranger's hand wraps, which may or may not give us more damage. Let's keep moving along. Here we got another shop. Uh, I, I really want to buy that 13,000 gold item. I really doubt I'll be able to afford it. There's our boss room as well, and you know what, because we have so, like, we're never gonna have more HP than this in all likelihood, we should just go fight the boss right away, and we might actually get enough to buy, like, that flame spear or ice spear or whatever it is. The boss fights are also where the, uh, like, Legend of Zelda vibe comes in in full effect. So I'm gonna try to use as many, um, as many of the turrets as we can. I think there's two different variations that I've seen on this boss, um, all of which I I involve this, um, you know, spinning kind of gauntlet of death here. Uh, but if we just stay far away, eventually he kind of like runs out of steam and that allows us to get in there and do some shots, which can be helpful. And, um, you know, we can also do some magical attacks, which will do a lot of damage. I kind of want to avoid using those as much as possible because it is like a bomb type situation. I actually think that the boss is, um, the boss fights in the game are pretty difficult. I don't think the consumables go away, so I can just wait till it's safe to pick up that apple. And, uh, that seems pretty good. We're about halfway through the boss fight so far. Certainly, I mean, a lot of it is probably because I'm familiar with the boss patterns in Isaac, but um, I, I certainly feel like the boss fights are a little bit more of a big deal in this than they, than they are in Isaac, but it is, again, you know, worth noting. There's a little bit of obvious bias there, considering how much I've played Isaac relative to how much I've played uh, this so far. So I'm probably going to get killed here, but again, I will come back as a ghost, which gives me kind of a second chance, so I think we'll at least be able to see the sewers. And maybe I'll be able to free some townspeople in the process. The overall goal of the entire game, I believe, is to, like, rescue your wizard. You know, we're a wizard's lizard. Our wizard was trying to cook up, like, some kind of potion that would um, grant eternal life, but instead he got kidnapped by death because death was like, you think you can, you know, supplant me as the Lord of Destruction or something like that? I don't know. You know, fairly standard stuff going on here. Um, I would rather get through this fight without getting hit and killed and turned into a ghost. We've basically despawned all the zombies because the fight's been going on for so long. We might be able to do it here. He's pretty mad. I very nearly got hit there. Um, I'm going to try to throw down a turret pretty soon, or a totem, as they are called actually in the game. That should be pretty good. And like a couple more hits. Come on, totem. You could have worked with me. I was so close, but we're not dead yet. We come back as a ghost. Which means we have to fight the ghost zombies. So remember there was those ghosts like flying around on the screen. Now we've entered the ghost world. So we have to fight some more of these ghosts. He was seriously like two hits away from death. That's kind of frustrating for me. Alright, so we got a health potion, which I probably shouldn't have even taken because um, there's no point to it when we already had full health. And everything becomes a lot brighter, which is actually kind of like 
nice as well. Uh, and we got two magical orbs, or soul orbs, I should say, for our troubles there. And, um... Well, at the very least, we can buy that ring. Uh, but do we want to buy that ring? Because it'll take away our, our multi-strike, right? So this is what I mean by the game getting harder after you actually die here. But, um, we're gonna try to farm up some, some money as well to get our weapon changed. Because we already have a decent, uh... Ring in the form of that multi-strike ring, so if we can avoid using that, I would feel better about it. Maybe there's some uh, pentagrams on this floor as well where we can revive ourselves. I doubt it, but we'll see. So, uh, some of the enemies are also more difficult, I think. Like, this bat is going to be more problematic than the average bat, I think. Maybe not, though. Oh, and the skulls are, of course, like, real enemies. Now, basically what it means is that you enter the ghost world where the ghosts that you could see in the corporeal realm are actually now, like, real hazards for you. Uh, the werewolves are maybe the most annoying enemy because of that, you know, teleportation trick that they have. And they become zombies after they die. Oh, it's a mimic, okay. I seriously saw, like, in my previous two games, I saw one mimic. So to see two in one game, although it has been a fairly long game by my standards, is, is kind of absurd. This is also a mimic, okay. Well, now it's just getting... Uh, to the point where it's kind of predictable, so I kind of like it. We are getting dangerously close to act- Oh, there's a Zambro I missed. Um, let's actually farm these for a little bit, see if maybe we can get enough gold um, to have a good chance to uh, get that uh, extra weapon, because the extra weapon variety is something that we would very much desire. Oh, I'd let the freaking thing hit me. It sucks because, like, health is so hard to come by. We've discovered a few HP items, but it's certainly, you know, it's got a different vibe than Isaac, where, um, you know, you're, you find- red hearts all the time basically uh, and and getting hit is not that big of a deal it's kind of a big deal in this because uh, you know it, cumulatively it, it does affect you mind you you kind of have a one up or an onk depending on your perspective uh, from the start of things that being said uh, you know it's still pretty difficult okay you know what totem goes down um, we didn't die which is nice we may act oh there's a treasure chest it looks like a good one is it breathing it's not breathing. That's a lantern. So I actually don't know what the spiked lantern does. Oh, there's some meat for finishing this too. That feels good. And there are still a few rooms left. I'm still hoping to get to like 13,000, but I'm doubting that it's going to happen now, but we'll try it out. And uh, after this run, I will, uh, if we die, to start the next episode, I'll, I'll show off some of the stuff that goes on in town. Because the town interactions are kind of what... Uh, sets this apart from something like Our Darker Purpose, uh, in particular. And again, I, I don't mean to take shots at Our Darker Purpose or something like that. I do like a Wizard's Lizard more. I had the, the freaking fan pulled me in. I couldn't get out of it. Um, I do like uh, a Wizard's Lizard more than Our Darker Purpose, at least so far. Um, but it's just a, it's a convenient point of reference, you know, because... Well, there's another room up here. Good. Um, it's a convenient point of reference because they are, you know, similar games. And it just keeps me from being like, Isaac, Isaac, Isaac all the time. Uh, and, you know, again, I, I do think that the Legend of Zelda vibe is, is a lot stronger in this than the even the Binding of Isaac vibe is. Alright, so this is going to be an annoying room. Kind of reminds me of, like, the nub rooms in Isaac. You know, where you get, like, a, a bunch of uh, green or red nubs. But as we take these out, I was really hoping that each one of these would pay out with, yeah, exactly what it just did right there. A uh, soul orb. The music, by the way, you can't probably hear it very well because of the way that I um, audio balance these videos. But the music in the game is really good. A little repetitive, but um, uh, very good as well. A, a real strength. Oh, there's another soul orb there. Okay. Oh, there's a townsperson. Okay. If nothing else, don't die here so I can rescue this townsperson and feel good about um, having accomplished something. Now, the way I understand it... Oh, come on. Don't do me dirty like this. Don't do me dirty. The way I understand it is that by rescuing the townspeople, you get more gold to start each run with, which actually seems like super important. Just hold up a little bit. Be very cautious here, because this is like the whole run distilled down to its most important element. Okay, you're still a thing. Now you're dead. It's just the owl. And we've killed- oh no, there's another man-eater trap here. Now, there's a little bit of a spike, I just wanna... This enemy should be so easy, but the pressure was on, so I got a little scared. There's some Zambros, that's okay. Thanks for saving me, I'll contribute 500 gold to support you in town. So there's an example of the kind of persistent element that goes on in the game. Which I think is really cool. Uh, and, and it does set it apart. 
So now we'll, we'll have a thousand gold to start each run with, which will give us, you know, a little bit of a head start towards picking up our first item. And there are items that you can buy just in town to, uh, you know, start off with a little bit of an advantage. So that's the kind of thing that gameplay-wise rubs some people the wrong way. Like, I know that a lot of people um, had problems with Rogue Legacy, even though it was pretty much universally beloved. A lot of people were like, well, I like Rogue Legacy, but I wish that, you know, it was a little bit more roguelike-ish in the sense that there was no persistence. But, um... We can buy both of these, but I don't want to buy both of them because I'm pretty sure that ring will actually take away my multi-strike. So I'll buy the Shaman's Tunic, which should give us more HP, like more max HP at the very least, and we'll move on here. Um, but yeah, I, I, I kind of dig that persistence. I forgot that there was a treasure chest back here. This may actually allow us to buy um, what we need to buy. Oh no, it just gave us a new weapon automatically. Royal Dagger. So that we're firing these like way faster. Um, no, we don't want the Steel Sword. Royal Dagger seems like we're firing... A lot quicker which makes sense you know dagger is typically the weapon of speed so we beat the cemetery three and now we're gonna head down to the sewers took us 16 minutes took 140 damage amazing that we're still alive um, I have never beaten one room on the sewers so this is already progress as far as I'm concerned and now it's pretty much all sight on scene I should use more of these uh, soul orbs because I have so many already but um, these like uh, Gertie jr. type things no they are moving around a little bit here. I'm digging the Royal Dagger. A little bit less damage, I think. But a uh, faster rate of fire is fine by me. I'm going to go ahead and imagine that those things are dangerous. And unfortunately, I was totally right. Alright, so that's a game over. Um, took us 16 minutes. Let's go to character selection quickly. No, we still only have one character. I want to unlock more of them. Especially like werewolf -y back here. This looks like, I don't know, a chicken or something like that. Um, but that's going to do it for this episode. I'll be back uh, to start with a little bit more of an advantage, I would say, uh, as Raga with a uh, thousand gold. Now that we finished a, or we've unlocked one townsperson, uh, if you enjoyed the episode, click the like button. I always say this on episode one: series like this live and die on the support of the first episode. So if you did enjoy the episode, if you're interested in the game and uh, me continuing to play it, click the like button helps out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more Wizards Lizard, at least over the duration of the series. But as always, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode, and I'll see you tomorrow with another one.